Hello everyone and welcome to the new Reinvented La Violette Knit podcast. My name is Manon, I'm your host today and I am located on the east coast of Canada near the Atlantic Ocean in a small rural community called Cocang. I live here with my husband and my rescue dog Stinky and Stinky is a rescue from Mexico. I'm sure we'll see him at some point either today or in a different time but He's a very cuddly little boy. So I decided to come back and change a little bit of the format since I no longer own La Violette Yarn and Kids Co. If you are here for the first time, welcome. I'm very happy that you're here. And if you are a returning viewer, I hope you enjoy it still and you can keep me company during this time. What I'd like to share today is the story and how my knitting journey started. It was uh, Christmas time, so I thought it was so appropriate for me to talk about it. Today is December 6th on Tuesday, and um, about 14 years ago, so I believe it was uh, 2009, at the end of 2008, I went into my friend's house, Maureen, and she had made this beautiful Christmas stocking for her son. And when I saw that, I'm like, wow. I used to knit when I was little, and my mom had taught me how to do a little scarf for my Barbie, so this garter knit on both sides. And of course, I didn't keep that up, but now in my 40s, that time ago, <laughs> I decided that I can come back to knitting and do some stocking like Maureen had done. So here's a picture of Maureen's stocking. It was really inspiring for me because I thought, okay, this is Christmas 2009, and my goal was that in a year from now, I would make each one of my family member a Christmas stocking. So by the end of the following year, when Christmas arrived, I had made not only four, I'd say five Christmas stockings, and I made two sweaters, I made hats, I've made scarves, cowl, I've made everything and I just couldn't look back and have a life without knitting. My husband loves to watch TV at night and I'm the type of person who cannot sit for a very long time without doing anything. But once I stopped knitting it really really calmed me and allowed me to just be busy and creative and inspired by all the knits I see. So let me show you my first stocking I've ever made. And this is this one here. This, I mean, can you believe it? Sable, Mustard. Yeah. So it's a little bit different than the one that Maureen made. I decided I wanted to have like a furry style. And she, um, Maureen had made a hat in that stitch in Mustard. So I thought, oh, I'm going to use that stitch to put on top of my stocking. So her pattern was that um, you actually seen the stocking, so you knit a flap one side and then you do the other side and pin it together. There's so many beautiful Christmas stocking pattern online on Ravelry. A lot of them are free. I'm gonna actually put in the description some of the latest Morocco posts that they've done with three different stocking. You can do fair rail, you can do cable, you can do plain stockinette. Doesn't matter your level of knitting, if you put yourself to a goal that is achievable, go for it, do it. Give yourself enough time to complete that goal. Like, I remember one time I had this lady coming in and she says, I want to learn how to knit. And I'm like, sure, we'll do a dish cloth. Oh no, I want to learn how to knit a sweater. <laughs> and I laughed because really, you need to stop walking before you stop running. So yeah, um, dish cloth was what we had, uh, we had knit that day. But so after knitting this beautiful cable stocking, I have decided that I can do some of my own pattern. So I did this one here with stripes. And one thing I realized quickly is once you do, you can stitch to the cable, but once you have a doozy yarn, cable is not the right yarn to use. I prefer a cable with a solid color or a semi-solid. Nothing that's variegated or stripy. You kind of lose all of the beautiful cable accent in Dizzy Yarn. 
And then I thought, well, I, I had looked at some Aaron sweater and I'm like, I can, I can change a cable that Maureen taught me how to do. And I did this one here. So I did a braid. <clears throat> what I didn't know when you do cable, that was my total inexperience, but it's fun to be able to look back and see how your journey has improved and your knitting skills. So when you do cable, it's quite important to do purl stitches on each side of the cable, like this one here. So what happens is when you do the purl, it really puts the release of the cable to here on top. So I didn't do that on this one, but I like it. So I did like a monkey style sock for my son. And even here, I like how I didn't know that I was supposed to knit the first row with the white yarn before I do change of color. So you can see the pearl bump, but it doesn't matter because that really inspired me. And then I did, oh, I did another one with that red and white. Which you can barely see the cable on this one. And my last one I done, my husband and I ride Harley Davidson, and I thought, oh, I'm going to make him one that's going to have a red cable in, on, in the middle, which I did. And I had no clue that the technique I was using is Antioquia. So when you change, well, when I stopped knitting and I put red for the two stitches, and I went with the black, then came back here and I dropped the black and picked the red, well, my yarn was not hold together. So I thought, oh, how can I achieve that red stripe without it being a space in between? Well, I twisted the yarn. And if you look at the Antiochia, Antiochia technique, that's what you do every time you get to here, you take the yarn and twist it at the back and then knit with the other color so that the actual fabric is held together. But it turned out pretty good and I love it. I really like the way it turned out. So this is how I got inspired to start my knitting journey and I've never looked back. There's nothing that I see that I feel that I cannot do. Um, if I see something that someone was able to do, I can do it. There's so many tutorials online that you can find. And if you are part of the knitting community, ask Ask your LYF, I'm sure somebody there will be able to help you with uh, if you get stuck with the project. So that was my knitting, my stocking, and today I am wearing one of my favorite FO. It is called the Princess T, and it is by Mini Me Knit Design, and it's cut cross sleeve, and I just love it. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful garment. I did brought in some modification right from the start. I love Ravelry because when people take time to write down the modification or the difficulty they've had making a pattern, it really helps the next person instead of touching that pattern. And it helped me. So the actual pattern was supposed to be a Nicob cast on. And actually, there was a provisional cast on, and then we did a Nicob lined up. That's right. But a lot of people had mentioned that they had to redo this part several times because it wasn't going over the head. Um, Nicord is not very stretchy, therefore, you either need to have a neck that's very, very, very wide to go over your head or something else different. So I decided to do a garter um, cast on. And I started right from the, I didn't do the provisional cast on. I started with doing a knit, then I did a purl, knit, row, and a purl, row, and then I started to knit. When I started, it actually um, was rolling a little bit, but after blocking, it really took off the roll and it sits flat and it's actually quite beautiful. It's perfect. Cross sleeves are exactly what I pictured and I love it. The bind off here at the bottom, the ribbing is called a broken rib. And I don't know if you can see that, but a broken rib is, uh, it's when you do, you knit the first, what the, the whole, every stitch, every stitches are knit in the first row. The second row, you knit 
curls knit curl knit one by one ribbing and the third row I'll knit the fourth row knit and curl knit and curl and you keep going on those two first those two rows repeat and you do it becomes a broken rib I like it it looks very pretty and that's it that's all the modification I've done and I love it I've used um Provoco yarn to do this garment. So the Ariel, which is a mohair, it's one of the softest mohair I've ever knit with. And the Lana Slide, which is a 100% um, Peruvian wool. And let me just tell you here, it is from Peru and it's um, a lot of yardage. So it's 100 gram, 350 meters. So it's considered a sports weight. It blooms, it's beautiful. Um, I love it. And then the Ariel, one of the reasons why it's softer than mo a lot of mohair is the content. It's got 65 super thin mohair and 35% silk. And it also has a little bit more yardage than most mohair. So this one has 260 meters and most mohair are about 220. So it goes a long way and beautiful, super, super soft, beautiful yarn. And other FO I have... I have made some mittens, so I'm sure that you have seen on Instagram or on some podcasts, actually. I was very fortunate that my friend Kim, uh, at least in Harmony, had shared my mittens. And also, um, we kept happy and cozy meadow knit. And I'm going to link those people below. If you don't watch our podcast, I highly recommend that you do. So the first mitt, oh, look at my hands, how pretty it is. Um, the first mitten I've done was um, a full mitten, and then uh, I did some shorties with the same leftover yarn as my uh, my top, and I really like it. So I think what next time I do it, I may do them a little shorter. I would like to stop this here, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do the ribbing. But they turned out beautiful. I mean, the shorties, we follow the same instruction as the mitten, and when you probably stop about half an inch before where you want your mitten to stop. You can do a little bit of ribbing or just plain stocking it with a smaller needle. And I did a rolled, uh, a rolled band up, just like the rolled last one here. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. And I like them so much that I'm going to give away some pattern today uh, to three viewers. So just... Um, Comment down below and uh, tell me uh, something about Mitten and uh, I will enter you into the draw. And talking about the draw, uh, last time that I podcast was a while ago, was episode 11. And by the way, this is episode number 12 of La Violet Knit. And we have some winners of the East Cowl. I don't know where my pen is. It's right here. Hold on a moment. It is here. So last time I podcast, I was giving away three patterns of um, Debra from Young Indulgences pattern. It's a beautiful cow and it fits so perfectly. Love the pattern. She wrote the pattern to be um, knitted in different ways. So this is so, I mean, versatile. If you have DK or if you have a worsted weight or fingering weight, and you can use, I mean, you can use any yarn. It's beautiful. So if you are NG2866, Sheila Tool 3223, or Noel Nelson 3007, send me an email and I'll send you a code to redeem for the beautiful East Cal, East Coast Cal Tidebra at Yarn Indulgences. Congratulations. Oh, what else am I going to tell you about today? Um, I have some whips. I have some whips. What do I have? Oh, this one here. Let me see here. So I purchased yarn to participate in Stevens West Mechel of this year. And I was very busy with, um, I mean, the PI Fiber Show. That's when the, the pattern was released. And then I announced the closing of the store, and then I travel. So, and with all the story behind the shawl, I kind of lost interest in making it. Actually, a little bit of my beginning here. 
Um, but I did lose interest in making this shawl. And then I saw the pose that he did for the glittering snowscape. And it is one of his uh, beautiful new shawl. Takes five colors, but I already had four colors of the gradient that kind of looked um, like the picture that I'm going to insert right here. I just love the pattern. And with Stephen West, I mean, you cannot be disappointed with all his stitches, but look at the details in these stitches here. It's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful shawl pattern. And I just finished the lace. The lace was a little challenging, but um, I can still do it. I can't think of if there's one. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't call me and tell me if you see a mistake in my lace. <laughs> it's so funny because there's some mistake I can live with and some mistake that I cannot. Um, when I first started knitting in that first year, I had taken a satin men sweater stripe with a stripe here. And uh, I modified the pattern to insert some color work for my son. And it worked out beautiful, except that, you know, I didn't think of how the math that was involved. And I didn't know how to carry my float. So some floats are very long, like eight to 10 stitches. But it turned out really, really nice. So when I started, um, it was raglan and pieces. So you had to do the front, you had to do the back, you had to do the sleeve separately and sew it all together after. And at the beginning, I, I did like, let's say, uh, four of the regular color. One, I was trying to make three little stars. I did, but at the end, it didn't kind of work the same way as it started, but I didn't really care. And he, my son doesn't care. I mean, he really loves the sweater. Um, he's actually asking for another one because he's been wearing it a lot. And every time he wears it, he's getting compliments. And he's so proud to tell everyone that uh, his mom made it. So, And then after making my son's sweater, I'm going to try to find a picture and insert it here, but I really will need. Um, I made my husband a table sweater with the same pattern pattern. So I just modified it to do a cable on the sleeve. And it's absolutely beautiful. And I reversed one of the cable at some point, And I thought I could live with it. So I left it there. But every time my husband wears it, he does it. <laughs> so when I see something like this now, I take it back. I do. I do. Um, what else do I have on the go? Oh, I am making a cable sweater, and the cable sweater is part of the flight of cable. Um, Buraco did a um, indie pattern designer, I'm not sure the program that they're doing right now, and they've been working with Bristol Ivy and Pia Coleman on the flight of cable. So it's a collection of six cable patterns using the Buraco Equa Ithaca. And I've done, um, I'm almost done. I'm almost done, but I don't know if I'm gonna put sleeve on it because I really like it. So I just finished the uh, the actual button then yesterday. And the pattern is absolutely stunning. It's done with chunky. So this is the old 12 pack of chunky. So it's quite a quick knit. It would be quicker if that would be the only thing I work on, but. Look at this, look at the cable. So I'm gonna try to put it on to show you here. And uh, maybe with a puff sleeve, not gonna be the best, the best look. Punched up there. I'm gonna stand up so you can see. Ooh, look at that. So I really, really like it and um, it would be nicer for me to try it on and show you with an actual shirt under it or long sleeve too. But um, I kind of like it like this and I haven't decided if I'm going to put sleeves. So probably the next time I podcast or come to chat with you, I will either have the buttons put on and it's finished just like that or sleeves on. I'll wait and see. But I really like it and it's a quick knit, really well written. What else am I going to tell you? I have some future cast on that I want to do. And one of the future cast on is the Alibit Hall and um, the Cut Bank Girl podcast. They are from Offset, along with Leanne from The Knitty Stew. 
they did a knit-along called Just for the Halibut. Yeah, Just for the Halibut. So I have decided to cast it on very shortly. I've got my balls, my cake all wind out and ready to go. This is the West, West Yorkshire Spinners in their fleece. PFL DK yarn and look at these colors. It's so beautiful. And this is one of the nicest PFL I've got. I can put casted on. That's going to be my project of the fleece. I love it. And then I have another project that I've got yarn kicked out for, which is very rare, but I just want to knit everything. Yeah, so this is. Um, a yarn by Amano. Amano is a Peruvian company and it's called Casti. And it's super wash, merino with linen. I think so I can be mistaken. But hold on, I better double check that. I'm back. <laughs> so this is Chesty, 60% super wash merino wool, 30% Pima cotton, and 10% linen. And look at the blending. Chesty by Amano. Beautiful. Yeah. So, Sophie was talking about it the other day on our podcast. And when we were knitting at the Stitch and Brew in, um, in Moncton, she was talking about casting on the thread and um, the veg. Sorry, pronunciation is not very good, but I think it's veg. Anyhow, you know the FOMO? Like, I'm like, Cast on too. I've been admiring this pattern forever, and mostly when Ellie had walked in into the store one day and wearing hers, I was like, "Wow, I have this on my list, and I need to make it." So, I've got the yarn. I've got a couple more balls, but so this is gonna be like a summer version, I think, because of the cotton and the linen, and I may do just three quarters just below my elbow length of sleeve. And uh, talking about sleeve, I'm looking at my sleeve. I forgot to tell you how much short time I had to do my bind off, the Ico bind off. Oh my goodness. So the pattern is very well beaten. Um, was I engaged? I was engaged for all the circlet. When I start doing the bind off, I use the recommended needle for the bind off and I can put my arm through it. Then I went up half a needle size. Up another half of needle size, then up another half of needle size. So I end up doing this with four size bigger. We're talking about half sizes. So I think I use a 5.5 millimeter to do my bind off. The eye curl does not stretch, so you need to be able to put your arm through the hole and be comfortable. So you don't want it to be tight either. You still want it to be moving up and down. So yeah. But beside that, the pattern is beautiful. Um, I also have another FO that, unfortunately, um, I, don't, I couldn't find my, oh my gosh, I have something in there. I can tell you, it's funny story. <laughs> my husband and I, my husband and I always play tricks on each other. And when we do, if we, the one folding the laundry and there's a bunk sheet in the laundry, we will put it somewhere, either in pockets, in socks in boots, in underwear, anywhere we can think of, there'll be a bunk sheet. <laughs> Just have to bunk it in <laughs> Oh, yeah, so this is the June grass sock, and I do have two, and they fit perfectly. Um, with me moving everything back from the store, I'm still on packing, and there's another one in there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to go and hide those two somewhere else. Uh, what? My socks smell really good. <laughs> I couldn't find my um, my sock blocker to show you a proper picture, but anyway. So these are the Dune Grass socks by Nancy Wheeler, and they are so much fun to do. Lovely, lovely, lovely pattern. That was my first ever co-op sock, and I end up with two different type of bind up. So one is the twisted rib, and the other one is just a regular one by one. And they both fit pretty much the same. And since they're for me, I am going to live with the two different socks. And I'm okay with that. I really, really, really like it. I don't know how you feel about um, 
I call it Young Festivals, but I love them. I walked my last Young Festival with uh, Miss Sophie from Cozy Midonis at the PEI Cyber Fest. And we were next door to our friend, uh, Young Indulgences, Deborah, and Nancy was helping Deborah as well in the booth next door, and we had so much fun. Good friend of mine was there. Came from Swiss Germany, of course, who's organizing this festival was there, and there were so many, so many beautiful makers. When I go to Young Festival, normally I don't buy yarn because um, I don't buy yarn, so in the yarn shop, why would I buy yarn? I bought, uh, normally I buy bags and I buy accessories and things I can't live without. And uh, I'm going to show you a few items that I thought I had to show you. I have this beautiful pin here, and it's a shawl pin. And let me see if I can get a bit closer. See, but there is a fleur de lis on it, and it's handmade by Janet Walker. And I don't know if you can see it. There, there's a blue stone on it. The fleur de lis. It's absolutely stunning and crafted in PEI. Janet, I'm going to link her below. Makes beautiful, beautiful jewelry. If you have any old heirloom jewelry passed on from a family member and you want to get it to be modernized but using the same stone, Janet does that as well. So this is too precious for me to put on a shawl, but like I had it on my sweater, it's beautiful and I'm planning to make a felted hat in the near future and if I do, I think it would be a beautiful pin for the hat as well, but it's very precious to me. Um, she watched the podcast and she was inspired by the fleur de lis I had on my motorcycle, my blue motorcycle, to make this. So, funny story is I walked into her booth while she was taking a workshop, and I chatted with her husband, and I looked on, and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this, a fleur de lis, and he giggled, as he knew that I had inspired Janet to make this. Um, thank you, Janet. I could not resist. had to have it. Beautiful, love it, I will cherish it. So this is one of my favorite uh, find at the PI Cyberfest. And my second find, and I know I was watching way back Noelle from Knits and Pieces. Um, she, does a, she has a beautiful Knit Cafe podcast. We do live every Tuesday and they podcast as well. Um, she had bought some dog, I think it's Golden Retriever, yarn at Knit City Montreal, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, and I was like, oh, if ever I go to a festival and I see that type of yarn, I'm going to buy it. So Belfast Mini Mills is in uh, Prince Edward Island. They were closing their retail shop. I think the mill is still operating at the moment, but they were closing their retail um, space and they were selling this one is made, let me put my glasses, I can really tell you what it's made of. 75% golden lab and 25% merino wool. And it's 125 yard three ply and it's spun right here and uh, on the East Coast. So this one is a golden lab color and I bought two. It is so incredibly soft. I don't know how. I, mean, there, I, I think I'm going to chat with Noelle to see what she ended up doing with hers. But I know it. I bought two of this one, and then look at the difference. It's just a little bit of a different color. This one is 75% Samoyed, those beautiful white dogs, and 25% Merino wool. Same, one, 125 yards, reply, and I've bought two of the white and two of the golden. Am I into golden? It is incredibly soft. I still don't have a project for them. Um, I may never have a project for them, but I own them. My plan, I was joking, is uh, I have this little dog, Stinky, and I was going to make him a dog sweater. But when I got home and he smelled it, he tried to eat it. So he's not going to get a sweater because that was a little expensive yarn. So no dog sweater with this yarn, but I thought it would be funny to have a little tiny poodle wearing a golden or semi coat. It's not happening. 
Anyhow, but I do have one more thing to show you. Hmm. Maybe a couple. So there was a beautiful maker. Um, her name is Alexis Toy. And I found her on Instagram, I think, or FC. I was looking at bags, and uh, she also makes bags. She also makes bags. So I had purchased this beautiful bag that she hand drawn and got the fabric. I love, love, love the bag. And then I stopped following her on Instagram, and then I noticed that she was going to be at the PEI Fiber Fest. So I messaged her and I said, I need to meet you. I love your bag. And not only she's a bag maker, but she is a curry maker. She wrote this beautiful book. And I still have to, uh, yeah, read. But anyhow, the book is about um, knitting, of course, knitting journey, knitting curry. And she does all of the illustration. She's a beautiful, beautiful maker. Look at her. And I was quite happy. All of illustration. So really, really nice. Uh, I highly encourage you to go and find her on Instagram. I believe she goes by Curry Made Yarns. I will um, I will link her down below. That book is stunning. Stunning, stunning. So many beautiful projects. You just want to make them all. And it was a pleasure to meet her. And yeah, that was one of my favorite finds from the PR Fiber Fest. And as you know now, I am a, I don't know if you know, you don't know, but I am a rep. Uh, a young rep, and I represent um, the company Duraco from the United States, as well as Amano from Peru and Lopi from Iceland, as well as West Reptile Spinner from uh, England, and um, all of those beautiful four brands are under the same umbrella in the United States, and I represent them. So I travel and I visit the yarn store, and it's a lot of fun. Um, oh my goodness. What better job than visiting yarn store? Anyway, I was visiting one recently, and her name is She Soul at Lazilan, and she had just imported this book. So this is softly timeless knit by Savvy Nordland, and I could not resist buying this book. It's beautiful, beautiful. I love her. I love all her pattern. And I am totally inspired to make most. I mean, so you know, sometimes you buy a book and you got a couple of patterns that you like, and then the book will just become a shelf ornament. I want to make almost every single thing. And the pictures, it's just beautiful pictures. Photography is stunning and beautiful. She's a great maker, great pattern designer. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get started. This one is so beautiful. Look at the details on the sleeve and the pocket, and it's got cables, and I love everything about cables. It's so good. Anyhow, well, thank you so much for joining me. It's, uh, it was a pleasure to be back here and talk to you about my knitting journey. i like to know, how did you start knitting? What inspire you to pick up needles or a crochet hook and start making fabric? Because when you knit, you're making fabric, and you can make so many different types of fabric with the lace and the cables and you know the interesting stitches, mosaic. It's endless the possibility of the fabric you can make. But what inspired you? I love you. I love for you to share that with me. I sure hope that you enjoy this uh, episode today. That was episode twelve. Don't forget to comment about the weekends if you want to win one of the free patterns. And thank you so much for joining me. So I'll be back maybe before the New Year's. I am not sure. But if I don't, I'm wishing everyone happy, safe, and good. See you soon.